Hello! You might want to create a drag and drop game where you have virtual manipulatives and you want the students to drag those manipulatives into a box or some sort of container and drop them there. In this case, on this card, I've asked them to put three in the box, but I've given them six manipulatives. So how do I create a drop zone that scores just three and not more than three? The answer is using the tiny paper clip function, which can be found if you click on your drop zone. Keep in mind, the paper clip will only appear if you have more than one draggable item attached to a drop zone. In that scenario, the computer doesn't know how many of those items you want to score as correct. So that's why you have to use the paper clip to tell it how many are correct. Now that I have my drop zone selected, I can look at the paper clip, which says now exactly three. I've got it set the way I want it. Underneath the paper clip are the codes for all six draggable items, my blocks here. If you click on the paper clip, you can scroll through the various options. Right now I have it at exactly three, but I can make it four, five, or six. And when I get to the end, it says then all. And then if you click from there, you can say at least one or exactly one, two, and I want three. So if I leave it like this in preview, if a student only puts one in the box and clicks submit, it's incorrect. If they put four in the box, it's also incorrect. It's only if they have three in the box that it allows them to go on to the next card. I've also seen games like this where all the manipulatives are stacked on top of each other. In this case, I've set my drop zone at exactly four, as I've indicated in the instructions to the student. When the student plays, this is what they see. And they can drag the items, which are hiding on top of each other, into the box. In this scenario, I have a more advanced graphic, but everything is set the same. I simply put an image of a milk bottle behind the drop box. Let's say you wanted to create a math deck in which students stacked their virtual Unifix cubes. You could create one drop zone for all of the cubes and give them instructions. When we preview, we see how that looks. Students can take any cubes they want into the drop box, but they don't necessarily have to stack them. And they might end up looking like this. Here's an alternative that you might try. Students can take these Unifix cubes and they can actually stack them in the drop zones. I've got four different drop zones, which are attached to every single Unifix cube. The drop zone paper clips are set to exactly one and snap to center because that will look cleaner. When I preview, Students can now drag any block they want and stack them up here. In this example, I have a tin frame with five separate drop zones. The drop zones are connected to all of the manipulatives because I want to allow students to choose which manipulative they'd like to place in which slot. Each drop zone is invisible with no border and no background, but it's set to snap to center for a clean look and the paper clip is set to exactly one.